Hello again, this is Foghorn with another installment of Flight School Academics for this, the 16th of March, 2954 or 2024. If you're stuck in the past, this presentation is part of an ongoing series of academics for the members of the Aurora Republic, the premier role-playing organization in Star Citizen. If you are new to the Aurora Republic or visiting for the first time, let me start by saying welcome. Glad to have you with us. Love to hear from you. If you're interested in hearing more from us, we're a lawful good organization focused on role-play exploration and social interaction and are currently active in recruiting on Spectrum and Gilded. So tonight we are going through, uh, we're continuing through our basic aviation uh, block of instruction, uh, which is to say, um, uh, today is uh, missiles and countermeasures. Um, so, or I should say uh, all weapons, weapons and countermeasures. Uh, this is uh, basic aviation 100 golf, part of our undergraduate pilot training uh, syllabus, part of the basic aviation block. Uh, graduation certification when you complete it is your undergraduate pilot training certificate. Um, it's a little bit of a longer one, so I'm going to be hustling and talking fast. If you, in fact, uh, if you have any questions during what, just feel free to unmute yourself here in the academics channel and uh, ask it in real time um, so that you're not waiting on the delay. Uh, OK, we're going to go over gun characteristics and employment, missile characteristics and deployment, and of course, how to uh, the types of employment of your onboard countermeasures and then the HUD symbology associated with it. And then we're gonna go in and go continue doing this overdrive initiative, um, which should be interesting. <clears throat> all right, so uh, guns, uh, all about guns. They're basically, um, uh, they're characterized by uh, five different types, which are characterized by what damage they put out. And they're categorized by um, four different categories, which are they're based on the refire delay. Um, there's actually something more to the refire delay based on the rebalancing or as would be more accurate, the unbalancing of um, all weaponry uh, across uh, different types and things that happened a couple of years ago and they haven't really changed it up since. So that ref uh, uh, those categories of cannon, Gatling, repeater and scatter guns are not only their refire delay, it's also their range. And I'll show that to you uh, in a moment. And if we're going to take half a sec and I'm going to get my laser pointer up as we continue to uh, uh, work through this because I'm going to be pointing out a lot of different stuff here. We're going through uh, some tables. So we're talking about ballistics first. We'll go through the different types of ballistic cannons. Um, these are uh, ballistics, obviously, um, go through shields to a certain extent. Um, they do have small the shields will still do some amount of damage reduction, but um, you are immediately applying damage to the hull. Um, we don't have armor in yet. A Maelstrom system is in the near future. So uh, armor will be uh, become a factor at a later date, um, but it is not right now. So uh, as you can see, as you go up in size, you go up in uh, both burst DPS and damage. You'll notice that everything um, and I'm mostly going to concentrate on size one through four because it's your normal ship weapons. The five, six and sevens and up are going to be really, really big. Obviously, the uh, uh, Starfighter Ares um, is the exception because it's um, um, the, you know, the Inferno is sporting a size seven uh, ballistic and uh, and the uh, ion is sporting a size seven uh, laser. So uh, those are kind of in a class with their own, but I'm mostly going to be talking about the size one through fours. Um, so you'll notice that everything has the same bullet speed. Uh, so if it says cannon, it means that your max range is twelve hundred and that your speed of the actual projectile is seven hundred. So keep those into uh, uh, in your cross check that if you are sitting in a turret or something like that and you're shooting cannons of whatever kind that your max range is 1200 meters if you're shooting before the target is at 1200 meters or less your bullets are getting edited out by the server before they even reach the target you are not even in range so um some other things and this uh this holds true through all the different uh types uh of both um you know, ballistic or energy weapons and whether they're cannons or repeaters or whatever um, is to take a look at the burst damage and take a look at how little they go up with size. Um, like people with with people fiddling around with the F7C Mark II the last couple of days, there's been a lot of uh, questions asked in global chat and all that kind of stuff about, um, hey, what can I put where? And when people go like, oh, so the F7C comes with size four weapons on the wings, but it actually has a size three mount under the nose. And then uh, in the center uh, ball area, you, there's a ball um, that you can, a size five uh, ball that can be inserted in there and it can have either a size four single mount or a, or 
a pair of size twos. And so there's a lot of discussions like, hey, do I should I put a single size three underneath the nose or should I put the turret and that can go underneath there and mount the two size ones? And then when I told, of course, as people are going like, no, go with the smaller weapons because you have more of them. This is why. So a single size three, uh, as you can see, if we're going to talk Melissa Cannon, single size three puts out between 500 and 625 uh, burst DPS, depending on which model you're talking about. A size one puts out 340 to 425. So if you have two size ones, you're putting out 680 to 850 DPS, and that's two sizes smaller. So the uh, a pair of smallers is better than a single bigger um, as far as burst DPS, alpha damage, and all that. Other than that, speed stays the same. All cannons, regardless of ballistic energy, whatever else, uh, the bullet, the, you know, Physical bullet or the laser bullet only goes 700 meters per second and you only got 1200 meter range. Okay, uh, ballistic Gatlings. Um, there is also a ballistic repeater, which is considered a different uh, category, but uh, I don't know why. Um, a ballistic uh, Gatling basically means multiple barrels, you know, spinning Gatling gun style, obviously. Uh, you'll see the burst uh, damage obviously goes up with size, but not by the significant amount. So two of a smaller is better than one of a bigger. Um, uh, but the thing about Gatlings, all Gatlings over all cannons is that the speed of the bullet is double at 1400 and your range goes out to 1500 uh, meters. So if you're shooting a Gatling, 1500 meters is your max range. Don't pull the trigger earlier. Um, ballistic repeaters, which is basically um, what's the difference? It means it doesn't have the multiple barrels of uh you know spinning multiple barrels that the gatling does basically works the same though so i guess it's like you know the ah64 apache's 30 millimeter chain gun which has a single barrel and just goes boo 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 really fast whereas the a10 has a 30 millimeter gatling gun that goes and spits out ammo really quick um but uh the ballistic repeaters there's only three uh there's only three or there's only three sizes one two and three of them but uh, same 1400 and 1400 speed and 1500 max range um, is what to remember there. Scatter gun. So if you're using a ballistic scatter gun, aka a ship shotgun, your max range is 400 meters. So you got to get in close. Don't pull the trigger outside of that. Um, DPS uh, speed of the pellets is 800. So basically it's the same as like the 700, you know, a 700, 800 is not that different. Um, but you got to be in so close that really speed doesn't matter because it doesn't really change your firing solution. And it's a shotgun. So you're not trying to, uh, you know, pepper something with a whole bunch of individual laser or bullet hits. You're going to pepper them with, uh, you know, basically a shotgun shell uh, worth of uh, pellets. OK, rocket pods. Yes, these are not exactly guns, but I'm putting them here because rockets being unguided behave like uh, ballistic weapons. So. Um, you'll see the three sizes, one, two, and three. You'll notice that all of the stats are the same because there really isn't the difference of, there is not difference rockets. These are all Jerichos. Um, the difference between size one, two, and three is the uh, ammo count. So in other words, it's not a different size of rocket. It's just how many are in the pod. So, you know, you're going to have uh, six to 12 on a size one and, you know, 18 to 36 of them on a size three. Um, distortion weapons. These are uh, energy weapons that don't do physical damage, but they tend, but they to they shut down systems and used to burn off shields. Uh, I hear that that's not exactly the case anymore. That shields actually protect you from distortion. Um, so you can't get you cannot get shields down with distortion weapons. But once they are down, now you can turn ships off for future boarding purposes. So they um, are starting to specialize what these different things do. Uh, again. Distortion cannons, you'll see the cannons, you'll see the uh, the the curve of the burst DPS going up with size, but not so significantly that two smallers aren't aren't better than a uh, one larger. There's that 700 speed. There's that 1200 meter range again. Uh, distortion repeaters. Ditto. Second verse, same as the first. You're just shooting distortion instead of bullets. So 1400 meter speed, 1500 meter max range uh, and the tune continues to be the same. Thank you daily for the uh, resub on uh, with a prime uh, distortion scatter guns uh, work similarly. Um, these are actually 
Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of scatter guns, but distortion scatter guns, uh, actually, I've seen in the past have some some usefulness. Uh, because once you guy got a guy's shield down, being able to get in, if you are in close, just go pop with the, the scatter guns. You don't have to aim that well if it's a fast moving, close in engagement. And you'll notice that the scatter guns are all really large. They're size four, five, and six because there's only three of them. Um, and so, uh, you do all that kind of distortion damage, thousand distortion damage potentially in a single shot. But again, 400 meter range, you're you're not going to be shooting this very far out. Lasers. All right, laser cannons. Second verse, same as the first. Everything keeps working the same as far as burst DPS. Uh, speeds are 700. Max range is 1200 for a cannon. Uh, you will notice that there's a couple of outliers. These are specifically the Vandal weapons that are on the Vandal uh, ships. So they are not removable off of the Vandal ships. You can't buy these anywhere. Um, and this is probably a throwback to back when um, before they did this like leveling of all weapons to make them all just standardized um, back in the day. So uh, when they did that with all the weapons, they uh, when they did that leveling of all weapons, they did that with everything that a player can purchase and swap out and all that kind of stuff. And they didn't touch the Vanduul stuff because that's all being developed over in Squadron 242. So. Uh, this 1500 meter range and 1400 meter speeds are specifically the size one and size two laser guns on the blade glaive and scythe, um, which are the only ways that you can get those is to go because you can't take them off and you can't move them. Um, laser repeaters, uh, second verse, same as the first, first DPS goes up a little bit, uh, but two smallers are better than one bigger. Uh, 1400 meter range or 1400 meter speed, 1500 meter max range. So don't shoot outside of 1500 meters shooting that laser scatter guns. Again, same O, same O. There's only size one, two, and threes. Um, 400 meter max range. There, plasma. Plasma weapons are in the game, but they're in one very specific spot. So uh, I'm really not going to talk too much about them because those are Vanduul weapons only so far. They have not put any other plasma weapons in. The only plasma weapons that are in the game are hanging off of the uh, blade glaive and or um, scythe. Uh, so we will see after Squadron 42 comes out. I imagine a whole bunch of stuff will start flowing over to uh, Star Citizen uh, proper. Tachyon. Okay, Tachyon cannons. There's uh, only three. There's a Singe 1, Singe 2, and Singe 3, which are size 1, 2, and 3. They are all Banu weapons. Um, and as you can see, they've had the same um, uh, treatment as everybody else. The only difference with a tachyon gun is you can actually trigger and hold and it will build up a charge. So the alpha damage that you see there uh, inside the parentheses is the held down charge when you release it is when it fires. Um, and the one outside the parentheses there uh, in the alpha damage is if you just quick trigger, just touch trigger it, you're gonna get on a size one singe. If you hit, you'll get 75 points of damage. If you trigger and hold it and then aim and hit and let go, um, you'll get 113 uh, points of damage. Still 1200 meter range, 700 meter uh, per second speed. All right, uh, gun employment, how to use the aiming solution. All right, so to successfully use a gun, you need three things. You have to be in range, which is why I keep har harping on that. 1200 or 1500 meter range because you need to know that or 400 if you're using scatters scatter guns um so you have to be in range otherwise the bullets aren't even making it to the target you have to be in plane which means lined up so that you're in the plane of motion of the target uh if you want to hit them and then you have to pull lead you can't shoot you can't aim at direct with the gun cost directly at the target because he's moving and in the time of flight for the bullet to get from you to him he will fly out from in front from uh, in front of it. So you have to not shoot where he's at. You have to shoot where he's going to be. So how do you do that? You have to aim ahead of him out on the velocity vector. Now, the system has two different aiming uh, references to help you with that. They're called a pipper. It's an aiming reticle is the actual technical name. And they have two modes which that can operate in. You can operate it with a lead pipper or a lag pipper. Um, the lead pipper, what happens is, is once you have a sensor target of interest, in other words, you have locked your sensors onto a guy to say, that's the guy I'm interested in, um, then your, uh, the, the pipper will start calculating based on his movement and your movement. Both the shooting platform and the target's movement are taken into account, 
in this calculation, depending on those two relative movements to each other, it will put a circle somewhere out along the velocity vector uh, in which the um, target is moving. Do not assume I have this drawn where the velocity vector is straight ahead out in front of the uh, and the target. But remember, this is six degrees of freedom maneuvering out in space uh, and maybe even within atmosphere a little bit. Um, so that. Uh, just because his nose is pointing somewhere does not necessarily mean that's where he's moving. He can be sliding sideways, backwards, forward, up and down, all that sort of stuff. Um, this will take all of that into account. So it don't expect it to always be out in front of him. I, whichever way he's moving, it will be ahead of his direction of movement uh, on that uh, that velocity vector. And all you do is you take your gun cross and you try to put it on that lead pipper, squeeze the trigger. And if he does not jink within the time of flight of those bullets, this is where 1400 meter per second laser repeaters uh, or not laser, any repeater, 1400 meter per second repeaters uh, have an advantage over a 700 meter per second uh, cannon is because the bullets are going twice as fast. So these lead pippers will be closer to the target and the he has less time to jink. Uh, I'm not saying that's what you should use. It's just one of the many, many things you need to take into your calculation when you're uh, deciding what weapons you want to put on your bird. Um, the other option is to use a lag pipper. A lag pipper is actually how the real world uh, uh, enhanced envelope gun sight that is ubiquitous throughout uh, um, US fourth gen and fifth gen fighters um, actually works. So uh, you still have a circle, but the circle is not the uh, thing you aim at with the gun cross. The circle itself is the actual sight you aim with. It will have a uh, dotted like rubber band line going to your your um, gun cross. Your ship's guns are actually all pointed at this gun cross. So when you're using a lag pipper, um, then th the circle is what you actually aim with. And you're actually going to put it on the uh, targets, fuselage or wings or whatever, put it on the target. And that's when you uh, squeeze the trigger. I have it drawn out here in front just slightly just so that you eyeball could see it. Um, you would actually, you know, let off, let off your lead a little bit so that the circle slides on top of him. And that's when you would shoot. Um, a lot of people prefer this um, because you can actually pick out parts that you want to shoot at without having that new cool precision mode that they've been talking about coming in 3.23. Um, you can actually do precision shooting just using that. If you can, you know, you can go like, OK, I really want to just continue peppering this left wing. Well, then you just put that on his left wing squeeze the trigger and as long as he doesn't jink um then he should be okay or you 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 should that's where you should be hitting all right missiles um missiles uh, obviously work quite differently um you have three types based on um based on their um seeker type their guidance type um so you got electromagnetic infrared and cross section um which is what they are seeking um the uh, uh, radio brevity code for uh, for them is Fox one, Fox two and Fox three. Re uh, uh, respectively, uh, if it's obviously if a torpedo, torpedoes also guide using this same schema. So uh, torpedoes are obviously bruisers, so it'd be bruiser one, bruiser two, bruiser three. Most folks don't bother to say the number type. Um, kudos to you if you do, you know, you get bragging rights for being awesome in your clear, concise, concrete comms. But uh, you'll just hear a lot of most people in the heat of the moment will just say Fox or Bruiser when they let one of these rip so that their wingmen and, and fellow combatants know that, OK, don't fly out in front of Daly just uh, for a moment because he's, you know, the, his, his ship is in the process of slinging a, uh, an explosive piece of ordnance out the front um, heading towards the bad guy. Uh, the electromagnetic have the slowest acquisition time. The cross section have the fastest acquisition time. And uh, I have actually re uh validated all of these numbers and things against urkel's uh, uh data poll from um the latest patch from 3.22.1 hotfix um okay so sizes and ranges based on uh sizes obviously so anything uh, size four and less is a fox anything five seven or nine is a bruiser because those are torpedoes but they work the same way it's still just a torpedo for in this game is just a giant missile um so as you can see damage goes up uh, size goes up, uh, min range uh, goes up as size go up. Um, so your size ones will be fairly close in. Min range is of, as low as like 750. 
Uh, you get up to size four and your min range is basically double that. Max range also goes up with size. Um, and there's actually a pretty good spread of variability within these based on which missile model you choose from, you know. So, uh, you know, within the size one, there's like what? There's there's marksmen, there's uh, sparks, there's there's I think four or five different size one missile models out on the market. Um, so they do the least like size one does the, does the least amount of damage, but um, they also have the shortest lock time, generally speaking. Uh, and they are the fastest, fastest speed missile, which gives the enemy the least amount of time to react. And they have the shortest min range. So if you're in a close fight in a lot of ways, going with more smaller missiles, uh, has advantages instead of going with fewer, larger missiles. So, um, that's the other thing if you know about, uh, which I haven't shown in here, but how missile racks work, um, you know, they have a three digit number, you know, it's, you know, uh, it would say something like. Uh, you know, four eight one, which means that uh, the f the first digit of the three digit number is what size hard point it mounts to. The second digit is how many missiles are on it, and the last digit is of what size missile. So a a an um the missile rack four eight one would uh mount on a size four hard point. And it would carry eight size one missiles. Um, so you can. Uh, in, unless your spacecraft that you're modifying in the vehicle manager, um, in, unless the missile racks are hard mounted, um, and there are some, there are some spacecraft that have the racks are hard mounted and you can't swap them out. Um, you can change what missiles are on those racks, but you won't be able to change the rack. Most you can change the rack, and you can go, no, I want, I want a whole bunch of small missiles, or I want a few really large missiles. And make your decisions like that uh, for your for yourself. Um, boink. Yeah, so I talked about that one. Uh, notice that the the torpedoes all suddenly have sort of a standardized min range with a couple of one or two outliers, um, and that they are actually <laughs> a shorter min range than the uh, size four. So uh, you know your tallies and your eclipses can actually shoot those size nines uh, closer in than uh than you know uh somebody who's got only size four missiles on board so think about that uh so like i said in general uh as far as lock times the bigger the bigger the boom the longer the lock um that's actually probably a bigger driver uh for um min range so you not only is min range a factor when you're in a a, a close in turning dog fight um but also how long does it take for that thing to lock up and then launch um so those are all stats you may want to think about because uh, obviously turning dogfights uh, very dynamic. All right, missile employment. This is based on keyboard and mouse, and it's the default settings. Uh, obviously, if you're using uh, uh, if you're using sticks or any other peripherals, you will have had to do some key binding in that. So obviously, I can't fathom, you know, I can't uh, 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 divine from thin air what how you have your setup. So I'm just going to go with the uh, standard defaults if you're using the keyboard and mouse. First thing is you need to designate your desired target and make it the sensor target of interest. So yeah, you have to have your sensors on the guy, uh, locked on the guy. Um, you switch into and out of missile operator mode with a short uh, click on the middle mouse button on your scroll wheel, just uh, short click it. Um, that, uh, if you have that, you and you are in range and you have um, the uh, target of interest within the field of view of the missile, uh, and you hold it within their lock enough, then it goes through its lock sequence. You'll have the uh, holographic uh, uh, dotted circle that will come in, 3D circle that will come floating in around him. Hopefully it'll turn green, it'll sink in, and it'll go doo -doo 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 and kind of count up clockwise. Uh, and when it gets to that, you have a full lock and you can shoot with the highest probability of hit. Uh, and then to shoot, you long hold the middle mouse button to let that sucker rip. At your target. All right, on onboard countermeasures to uh, decoy these things away or to fool them. Then there are two types. There's the noise field and the decoy. Um, they work. Uh, they work against all gui missile guidance types. Um, there is varying amount of effectiveness depending on the type of missile, basically on, based on the guidance of the missile and which uh, onboard countermeasure that you use. But decoys work for all of them and noise field works for all of them. 
they just work for them a little bit better against this and you know decoys work a little better against that noise field uh works a little better against this that's more detail than i actually uh even care to keep in, in my mind i'm just like okay uh both of them work and oh by the way the noise field will also work on sensors too so you can break people you can get people to break their sensor lock on you um if you uh deploy uh, a noise um field at the right point um with and with proper maneuvers <clears throat> thus forcing them to have to reacquire you. All right, the uh, radio brevity code is chaff. So if you're yelling at somebody to throw, uh, throw out a noise field, then uh, you tell them to drop chaff um, or tell somebody that I'm dropping chaff. Typically, the way this works is you'll hear a pop come out the uh, somewhere in the back of the uh, spacecraft as it ejects um, a single cartridge that will burst into several different little popcorn fireworks around the spacecraft. It'll look like... Uh, burnt tinfoil if you happen to see it <clears throat> and then um, when those things go off they provide a massive area of generalized uh signature return that's all the same in other words uh, as far as electromagnetically infraredly and uh, all of that it tries to just hide you in a uh, basically a an electronic cloud so that you look like everything else and makes the missile not be able to tell uh where you are at within that area uh decoys the uh brevity word is flare so it'd be like yell at somebody flare 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 if you see a missile going in at them um or you know dropping flares if you tell them that i'm dropping flares these are uh a point decoy um instead of having giving a broad generalized area you drop a uh, two or three of them at a time um they all give off the same signature as your spacecraft but bigger and more powerful hopefully uh, decoying the missile to get them to go after one of those instead of you as you fly away safely. So what's the best countermeasure to use? The uh, answer is, well, that depends on what's being shot at you and what the tactical situation is, but um, pretty much the best countermeasure is always to drop both if you can. You don't have an infinite amount of chaff. You have a lot more decoys than you have chaff, uh, than you have noise. So, um, but when it really comes to shove, if you're all beat up and you're thinking the next hit might blow you up, um, it's probably better to drop three or four decoys, drop uh, a noise, aka, you know, two or three flares plus a chaff and maneuver. Anytime you are dropping any countermeasure, don't just drop it and hope that the countermeasure works. You drop it and you move the jet. Put G on the jet, as we say, you know, whenever you're dropping chaff or flare, you have G's on the airplane to get the hell uh, away from where you just dropped it so that uh, the missile, uh, if it does detonate on one of those decoys or anything, it doesn't still catch you in the blast. Um, so get the hell away from your own decoys, from your own uh, countermeasures. All right, so the HUD symbology for all of this stuff, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with, but uh, we'll go over it very quickly here. Uh, so when you're in guns mode, obviously over on the right side, you got your guns, their names and their quantities, and they are in two columns. That uh, the the columns are fire group zero and fire group one because this is being made by computer nerds who can't do one and two. They have to do zero and one. So if you look down in the MFD, you have fire group zero and fire group one. Fire group zero is on the left. That equates to your left mouse button. And the fire group two is on the right. And that is your right mouse button um, or however you have it mapped. If you have moved your controls around into some other schema. Your onboard countermeasures are down in the lower right. You'll see your decoys and noise, and you'll have a uh, quantity remaining um, is inside the box. Decoys can be set to drop in a salvo. So you could say, I, every time I hit the button, I want to drop three decoys. Um, if you set it up that way, then um, there will be a red number above that uh, bar above the box, kind of about where the end of that yellow uh, arrow is that'll say what, you know, two, three, four, whatever you have set for, you know, one press of the button gives me three flares. It'll be a red three up there. Uh, missile mode, when you kick that in, you'll get this larger uh, dot, uh, dashed circle um, out in front of your HUD around the uh, gun cross over on the right side. You'll have your missile type name and quantity. Um, the number that is underneath the missile name is the quantity remaining on the spacecraft. You can salvo fire these as well. So if you select to have to shoot two, three or four, I think I believe the max is four. 
um, you will get an additional green vertical ready bar that shows up for each additional missile that you're going to fire. In this case, we only have one, so we're only going to fire one. If we had two, there'd be two of those green bars and they will start. And when you very first select them, they will start counting up from the bottom when you first come into map missile mode or when you first change from a different type of missile to this one, those will start counting up from the bottom. They're fairly quick. They take about a second to go beep. And that means that the missile is now prepared to be used. Um, you can't fire it early uh, until that green bar is all the way up. And again, you will have your uh, uh, onboard countermeasures types and quantities uh, will be there. The other thing um, that shows up when you're in missile mode is on that inner bar, you'll have a missile range. Uh, its min range will be at the bottom. Obviously, for the Ignite 2s, the min range is, a, is one kilometer. Max range is 10 kilometers. And if you have a target of interest locked on your sensors, um, and uh, it will show up as a carrot uh, somewhere along this bar at its appropriate range. So if he's seven kilometers away, you'll see a carrot uh, pointing at this bar and it'll say 7.0 kilometers and it will slide in or out depending on as the range of your between you and the target moves in or out as appropriate. Um, if you are getting shot by a missile, you will get a missile warning uh, from your system. The symbols are up there. EM looks like a, a lightning bolt. IR looks like a flame and cross section missiles look like a, a the Wi-Fi symbol. Um, it, they will show up down at the bottom of the center main par part of your HUD uh, below the gun cross. And um, you will get an audio warning of boop, 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 boop. You know, they'll let you know that uh, a missile is inbound. Um, that symbol will show up. Uh, and it will have a number at the bottom that will tell you the number of missiles that is inbound, and it will have a countdown clock or a, a circle around it that will count down counterclockwise with its time until impact. And that may change depending on what you do to maneuver. If you're kind of sitting still, you know, um, uh, that uh, if you were like sitting still, say, as the example over on the left, that EM missile that's coming in on you and uh, with it uh the little quarter circle left if you suddenly went full afterburner and try to fly away from it and everything um and it was behind you then you might actually get that circle to come back up as you've changed the um the uh closing velocity between the missile and you and therefore going to make it uh take more time this circle i think if i remember right i think the circle fully around represents the last 5 seconds of the time of flight so like in the EM case over there, that's saying that you got about maybe a second and a half, maybe uh, before impact. The IR is at about four and a half seconds and the and the uh, uh, cross section is at about somewhere around three seconds till time of impact. Assuming you don't do anything like I just said, like jam on the afterburner, fly away from it. Now it's got to run you down, which obviously would make that circle come back up as you changed the number of seconds because you're no longer sitting still. A lot of stuff. Question. Oh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Um, with your countermeasures, when is an op when is the best time to deploy countermeasures when those when that fat when that missile's coming in? Do you um, deploy them as soon as you get a missile alert, or do you wait until it's a second away from hitting you? Uh truth and lending, I do not know for sure how it's met. In real life, uh, it depends. Um, can you drop uh, onboard countermeasures too late? Absolutely. Uh, if you don't do it at the, if you don't, do, if you do it too late, the missile's already on you, um, and you're gonna get blowed up anyway. It's not even gonna, it's it's not gonna matter. Um, that's actually later than you think. Uh, Certain decoys in real life, certain countermeasures don't work at a certain range outside of a certain range. So flares in real life against an, uh, a heat seeker um, may not work if you drop them way too early. If this is a like a real rangy shot, this guy just managed for, you know, managed to get his heat seeker to lock on to you out at an extremely rangy point and he lets it rip 
and you drop the flares a little too early, um, then the missile may not even see the heat from the flares. And not even, you know, the, I don't know if they've coded that into Star Citizen. There's kind of a middle zone that in real life that's kind of better. That works totally different for chaff. Um, the short answer is, is we don't, I don't really know. I haven't, they haven't talked to that. Um, and we have not run science uh, to any extent to kind of practice that. The, the biggest answer is, is, is uh, whenever you can. Uh, I personally don't drop immediately that I get the missile warning because it's usually a lot of times you'll get the missile warning when it's still like five seconds out. I kind of optimally, if I see it coming, I will drop uh, countermeasures somewhere in the mid of that flight. So somewhere where that call sign or uh, that, that, that cross section, somewhere there and later, I'm going to drop. Um, if it's anything later than that, I'm dropping right now and maneuvering hard. Um, if it's if it's the case of the IR, I'm going to wait two seconds before I drop. If it's the case of the cross section, I'm going to probably I'm coming into the point that I'm thinking about dropping. If it's the E, I'm dropping immediately and I'm panicking. You know, I'm going to th throw out countermeasures. and I'm going to pull a bunch of G's to try to get away from it. That seems to work for me just fine. And oh, by the way, I never drop a single decoy. I always drop three. I don't always uh, remember to get the salvo set up. So when I do, I look down there and go, do I have a salvo of three? If I don't, then I go, I just mash the button three times. One, two, three, you know, click, 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 throw out three decoys. Um, and that pretty much staves off just about every missile that's ever been shot at me. It seems to work pretty well doing that. That's all technique. Um, it seems to work well. They haven't really talked to us uh, much on the nuances of um, the, you know, what's the range and distance of missile warnings? What's the, how good is the countermeasures? How good are the seekers on the, on the missiles? It's all video gameism. So, um, and that seems to be pretty ubiquitous. I've heard some of the, you know, I've heard Avenger one and, and some of those uh, fellows basically say the same thing kind of somewhere in the mid-range of that warning is the best. But definitely, if it's any later than that, just get them out. Get them out now, because, you know, if you get them out and they didn't work, it's not any different than if you hadn't put them out. But if you put them out and it does work, then that is better than having not put them out. Hope that answered gotcha. your question, kind of. <laughs> Clear as mud. Clear as mud. All right, that wraps up this installment of Academics of Foghorn. Hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you have any questions I didn't answer, please feel free to contact me via email, Gilded Spectrum, or, of course, on the comments section below if you're watching this later on YouTube. Um, I will answer to the best of my ability as soon as I see it. Uh, if you have, uh, please hit those follow and subscribe buttons as appropriate. Comment your comments in the comments. We're always striving to improve our content. You can find out more information about the uh, Aurora Republic at aurorarepublic.space, our bespoke website, or on the less bespoke website known as robertspaceindustries.com slash org slash Aurora Rep. See you next time. Foghorn signing off, wishing a very pleasant remainder of your morning, afternoon, and evening. And thank you so very much for watching.